Good day. Welcome to Bible Class Topics. Our study for today and, Lord willing, next week concerns the word sanctification as it's used in the Bible. As we said, part one of two, Lord willing, next week about this time we'll publish part two. In John 17, 17, Jesus is praying here. And at this point in his prayer, he's specifically asking blessings on his apostles. And he asks God the Father, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. The Hebrews writer in chapter 12, verse 14, talking to his reader, says, Strive for peace with everyone, and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. This word holiness in Hebrews 12 is a synonym for the word sanctify in John 17.7. More about that in just a few minutes. The word sanctify means to set apart to a special, holy, or religious purpose or service. Other synonyms in the New Testament include consecrate, dedicate, perfect, purify, and make holy. Sanctification for God's purposes changes the how, or changes how he uses the life of a person, but it does not change the person's nature. And stay tuned for part two next week, in which we'll talk about that in more detail. To be in a right relationship with God and in a right relationship with God's law and to serve God as he sees fit, that is sanctification. Therefore, we see that it is necessary and it is not an optional thing for a Christian. We must be set apart for God's purposes. All true Christians are sanctified. Therefore, all true Christians are saints. The word saint is from the same root as the word sanctified. So if we become a Christian, we live the Christian life, we become sanctified, set apart for God's service, we are the saints. In our discussion today, we want to look at sanctification as taught in the Old Testament. Then we'll look at sanctification in the New Testament. And then we'll talk about how individuals are sanctified. In the Old Testament, we see that Jehovah God sanctified the Sabbath day for the purposes of the children of Israel. Genesis 2, 3, so God blessed the seventh day. It made it holy because on it God rested from all of his work that he had done in creation. So at the very beginning, we see God himself created the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested. Then he charged the children of Israel. In Deuteronomy 5.15, you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. And the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Also in the Old Testament, we see that the firstborn of man and beast were set apart for the Lord. In Exodus 13, verses 1, 2, and 12, the Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever is the first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both of man and of beast, is mine. You shall set apart to the Lord all that first opens the womb, all the firstborn of your animals that are males shall be the Lord's. Also in the Old Testament, we see that the tabernacle, its vessels, and the priests were all set apart. They were all sanctified and consecrated. 
Leviticus 8, 10 through 12. Then Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was in it and consecrated them. And he sprinkled some of it on the altar seven times, anointed the altar and all its utensils and the basin and its stand to consecrate them. And he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate him. When we move into the New Testament, we see that things that are sanctified there are quite a bit different from the things that were sanctified in the Old Testament. We'll begin with Christ himself. In John 10, 36, do you say of him whom the Father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God? Jesus says of himself, I am the Son of God. And he says of himself that the Father had consecrated him and, and sent him into the world. The Father had set him apart to do a specific job. Then moving into John 17, verse 19, And for their sake I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. And this again is in that prayer of John 17. If you've not studied the prayer of John 17 carefully, it would be well worth your time and your effort. One more verse concerning the sanctification of Christ himself. 1 Peter 3.15 But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. As, as Christians, we must consider that Christ himself is sanctified, that he is holy, that he is set apart for a special purpose. He deserves our respect. We shouldn't let his name come out of our mouth easily. So many people use his name as a curse word in this world. I cringe every time I hear it used that way. Besides Christ himself, the New Testament tells us that the apostles were set apart for a special work. Let's go back and look a little more into this prayer that Jesus made in John chapter 17. This time we'll look at verses 15 through 19. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. And as you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth set apart in truth. Also in the New Testament, we see that the church, the collective body of Christians, was sanctified, set apart for a holy work. Ephesians 5, verses 25 through 27, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. If you're interested in studying the context of Ephesians chapter 5 a little more thoroughly, I'll put a link in the end card to a lesson on that chapter. The final thing we want to look at in this lesson is how are individuals set apart? How are we sanctified? 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, 
in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Each has received a gift. Each has been set apart as a good steward of God's varied grace. Each Christian has been given a way that they can live the Christian life. It might be through teaching. It might be through preparing meals. It might be through many, many things. Just because someone takes leading parts in, in Bible studies or in worship services, that makes them no better than the one who made sure that the communion service was prepared, that made sure that the place of worship was kept in order, that made sure that absent church members were contacted and made, and made sure that everyone is doing the best they possibly can. How then are individuals sanctified? Well, through the truth. As we read in John 17:17, 17, 17, that's how Jesus wanted his apostles to be set apart, through the truth. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 6:11, such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. Through the truth, we are individuals are sanctified, set apart for God's glory. And through the Spirit, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood. That's what Peter says in 1 Peter 1, 2. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father in the sanctification of the Spirit. What for? For obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. We see in this passage and elsewhere in Peter's writing that individuals are sanctified by the agency of the Holy Spirit. And how does this work? Through God's Word, which has been revealed by the Holy Spirit to his apostles and prophets, to the writers of the New Testament. 2 Peter 1.21 For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, as an individual Christian, I am sanctified or purified through the Spirit when I answer the gospel call, and I believe and obey the truth. Back to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, will love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. Individuals then are sanctified through the truth and through the Spirit. And as we've already hinted at, they're sanctified by being called by the gospel. They're sanctified through God's revealed word. In 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 13 through 17, But we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. To this he called you through our gospel so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. 
Paul also wrote to the Philippians. We'll look in chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if any, in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. If a man is to truly be sanctified to God's service, then a man must change. We must leave the old man of sin, and we must leave him behind and press on toward the mark of the high calling. This pressing on will be a lifelong battle. It will be a lifelong battle for us to remain set apart for God's work. In part two of this study, we will see that sanctification does not, however, demand sinless perfection. As human beings, sinless perfection is impossible. Please be with me next time for that lesson. I've adapted this outline from the Sermons of R.C. White, pages 86 and 87. If you would like to get in contact with me and would rather not leave a comment below, you can reach me at BibleClassTopics at gmail.com. As always, I appreciate you studying with me, watching the videos. I also appreciate those of you that have subscribed to the channel, those that are willing to give the video a like or even a dislike. Don't forget to leave me a comment if you wish and to share a link with your friends, neighbors, and loved ones. Till we meet again, may God bless.